Welcome back to another episode. The Clever Angle Podcast. I am your host, Tevin McGee, and today I have Chelsea Rogers Greer with me today. And I'm excited to talk to her because she is going to explain social media to me. So, Chelsea, how are you doing today? I'm great. How are you? Pretty good. Pretty good. So, can you just explain to the audience a little bit about what you do on on a day to day basis and your title and yes. things like that? So, I started a digital marketing company back in 2020, and Back then, I just wanted to do social media marketing. I felt like there was a need for businesses to be better represented online, and that slowly grew into what it is today. That was almost four years ago, and now we do anything on the digital world. So we'll do digital prints, we do ads, we do anything with social media, obviously, email marketing, web design, pretty much you name it in the space online, we do it. So what were you kind of doing before you decided to to do that? I have a pretty wild transitional story. So I went to school for uh, medicine. I went to school for radiology and I did the whole plan of that. That was always my dream was to work in a hospital base and I loved it. And I worked all through COVID and I went back to school. I did radiology, interventional radiology, and then went back and did... um, radiation therapy. So I was in the thick of all the medical world. And then COVID hit. And I realized in the midst of COVID, I was also pregnant with our first child. And it was just like an overbearing fear. But also, I felt a pull of something more creative. I've always been a creative person. And I've always wanted to do something to express myself creatively. I actually had a blog when I was like a probably a freshman or sophomore in college before blogs were even a thing. And now I'm like, if I would have stayed with that, would I have been a blogger like all these (laughs) blogger girls? But I always wanted to do something creative. And it was probably 2018 before social media marketing is what it is now. I had this little seed planted and I swear it was God saying, this is what you need to do. And I was just fearful. I didn't want to give up my career that I fought so hard for. You know, being in the medical field, you grind and you study and you study and your life is studying. And then you realize like you kind of lost the light of what you wanted to be by doing that. And I loved my coworkers and I loved who I worked for. But at the end of the day, I didn't feel my purpose was being fulfilled. So let me ask you this. You said that you've always kind of been a creative person. Mm -hmm. So what drew you to wanting to do the radiology thing? Then? Yeah. If, you know, that, that's kind of it's just not creative like at yeah, all. It's kind of like in a box, sort <laughs> yeah. of. You know what I mean? So yeah. what kind of drew you to that? Mine was always helping people. Like, I love people. I feel like I'm a very people person. You could put me in a room with anyone and I'll find something I love about them. And um, that's very honest and true of who I am. I just love people. I love their stories. I lear- love learning about them. And that's why I love the healthcare. Because especially with radiation therapy, I would see those cancer patients every day for months at a time until their treatment was over. So I got to know them personally, their life stories, their goals, all of that. So that fed that for me. And that's why I stayed in it for 10 plus years. But then I also realized that I could have that outside of that and fill my creativity while still having that people interaction that I love so much. So tell me a little bit about just you growing up and did you have a dream job growing up and was that different from radiology or was that the same? Yeah, um, I always wanted to be a mom. (laughs) I feel like that's very cliche to say, but being a girl, I always just wanted to be a mom and have my babies. But then I also had the little hints of seeing radiology back when I was probably 12 broke my first bone, got to see the medical field and all that, and it very much interested me. So then that's how I transitioned going full force into the medical field. Um, And then once I became pregnant, that's when I really started thinking, okay, long-term goals, I want to be a mom. 
And being in the medical field, I was always on call. I was working long hours. I was the unknown of all of it back in 2020. I was nervous about bringing stuff home to my babies, you know. So with that, that's when I really opened my eyes and was like, okay, I can do more. (laughs) I can live brave. And that was probably the big beacon of opening my life, I feel like, of taking that leap of faith because it was very ballsy. I was the insurance carrier for our family. I was 28 weeks pregnant when I launched this business. So it was our first child and I was like, I'm going to launch a business and I'm not going back. I'm going to do my maternity leave and then not go back full time. I'm going to lose my insurance, but we're going to figure it out. And at that moment, I didn't have the clientele I do now. I don't didn't have the financial side of things that I have now. And I was just like, I am going to live brave and I'm going to do this because I felt that inner pull that I just knew I had to. Yeah. So um, did your parents have any kind of, I guess, pull on what you were going to do? Did, like, did you feel a need to do a certain thing yes. because of your parents? Yes. Both of my parents, I have the best parents and I'm so blessed by them. And they both told me I was crazy for starting this job. They were like, you're going to leave this career you worked so hard for. And luckily, they supported me with whatever. But I did feel like I needed to have that go to college, get the career, do the job, get the 401k, have all of that, because that's how I was raised. I felt like there was a need for that, Um, which is funny now because my father's an entrepreneur And I know I get my entrepreneurial from him, but also my parents are the hardest working people I know. And I consider myself one of the hardest people that I know. And I know that was instilled at such a young age. So my hard work definitely comes from them. And they were able to watch me work hard and hit my goals with radiation therapy and the hospital scene. But now this, it's different, but it's just the same in the sense of hard work and getting to do what they kind of instilled in me. It's fascinating because I I had a similar uh, influence from my parents. You know, it was just the generation that they were from. Uh, I was always taught at a young age that I was, you were to go to college. And that was kind of one of the reasons why I started this podcast is because I kind of got to the end of my undergraduate degree. And then there was not like this job at the waiting. You're like, then what? Exactly. You you know what I mean? So uh, I definitely think that there's a, a place for college for degrees like radiology and being a doctor, something in the health field for sure. But uh, I wish that there was some kind of education course that told people that every degree is not going to Absolutely. guarantee you a job. You know Absolutely. what I mean? Um, I was 18, 19, not really knowing what I wanted to do. And it got to the point where my parents were like, hey, like you still got to go to college. Like You still got to go. I'm like, mom. Dad, I don't know what I want to do. And uh, so they kind of nudged me in that direction. And I'm like, man. You feel like you wasted those years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, to a certain extent, um, that's kind of why I started the podcast. You know, the mission statement of the podcast is to help people find work that they love through listening to the stories of others. Absolutely. um, Like, I don't regret going to college because of the years. Like, we knew each other in college. We had fun in college. College was so fun. And you make those connections that I probably wouldn't have some of the clients that I do now if I didn't meet them in college. And I always have that back plan B just in case, you know, like if the world shuts down, there's no more internet, there's no more social media, God forbid that happens, I could go back to the hospital if I needed to. So that for me is insurance, but also I would never, (laughs) I would never do it. It's just not what I want for my life anymore. And like you said, you don't realize what you want for your life when you're younger. And I think it took me realizing like, okay, I'm grown. I'm a mother. I'm about to be a mother. Let's change things up. Let's change the narrative. Yeah. I mean, you really don't even get to start to get to know yourself until, you know, mid twenties, just through experience. One thing that I'm learning as I get older is experience is just the best teacher. It's the best. You know what I mean? So um, how long were you in the radiology field? before you decided to, to oh, transition? Um, so I think, so I started this job in 2020 and I started my business in 2020. I started working at the hospital in like 2014 
And I feel like I had this nudge of wanting to do this around 2017. So I really started like marketing just myself, not realizing that I was really good at marketing, just being myself, being authentic. I feel like that is the forefront of marketing is authenticity. And I was just very authentic online. People would send me videos that had nothing to do with, for an outside person, they'd be like, why are they sending Chelsea that? But for me, it was part of my brand, you know, like drinking coffee, having coffee talks, having a psychotic dog. (laughs) Like that's things that people would send me because it was part of my brand. And I feel like that helped me kind of transition into everything. But like you were saying earlier, it's so easy to just fall into that. And being in the hospital, I told so many of my coworkers when I was toying around with these ideas, I kept saying, we're not trees. Like we're not trees. We're not planted in the ground. And that's where we're stuck forever. And I feel like so many people go through the rhythm and the routine and they know they're going to wake up at this time and they know where they're going to get their coffee and they know where their lunch is and they know who they're going to hang out with and they get comfortable. And then you're not a tree. Like you can spread your wings and you can move and you can go to different careers if you're not fully being fulfilled and feel like you're in the right place. So I feel like that's why it took me a minute, but also I just jumped in. So in total, after high school, how many years of college did you have with all of your um, degrees and certifications? I did five. Five. Yeah. Okay, so it's 2020, and you are, you've you been toying around with these ideas mm-hmm. since 2017. I'm very pregnant at this point. Very, very <laughs> pregnant. So, I, I, you know, I've, I've been through two pregnancies yeah. as a husband, yes. you know what I mean? So um, what, what, what was that tipping point to where you're like, Man. I'm going to go ahead and start this and and not go back? I I feel like I'm a very level-headed girl. Like, I am not an emotional girl. I'm not a crier. People make fun of me all the time because Kyle is the emotional one in our relationship. Like, I just don't have emotion. Like, I'm not the feely kind of girl. And I remember being freshly pregnant at this point. Like, I hadn't even told my mom yet. And my mom is my best friend. Like, I wanted to tell her first and foremost. And I had an absolute meltdown bawling in my kitchen floor because I was going to have to tell everybody at the hospital first before I told my family because of COVID and because I was in radiology and I was going to be around the radiation. So that changes things when you're pregnant. COVID changes things when you're pregnant. And having all of those factors, that's when I was like, okay, let's do the damn thing. Like, like I've been saying forever, you're not a tree. Let's do it. And I told myself, you have to live brave. God would not put things in your heart if he did not want you to push forward on that. Just like your podcast, like you would have never had this idea if it wasn't something that you could potentially be really good at. And I'm a firm believer. I always say I'm here for the dreamers and the doers. And I've always been a dreamer and I love the dreamers, but I love the doers more because at the end of the day, everybody has dreams, but it takes so much umph and fear and bravery and charisma and all the things just to be like okay like you can plan it all you want and but until you execute it and you live brave and you jump in with both feet and you power through you won't know the success that's on the other side so what did that look like what did that transition plan look like because uh, <laughs> you, you were talking about you're here for the the dreamers and the doers yeah I would say I'm somewhere in the middle as a planner. So yeah. like if I'm thinking that, okay, I'm going to leave my career, I'm going to leave my You're job. You're probably more like, responsible than me. Well, I mean, <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know about that, but I, I just think that like I, I'm i all for taking action. I just want to know what yeah. it's going to look so like. So what I did, I went down the rabbit hole, like you were saying about your podcast gear. I went down the rabbit hole of searching for this. And back then, like now when you get on Instagram and TikTok, everybody's a social media expert everybody's telling you how to grow on social media. They're telling you what to do for this business. That wasn't around. And that a lot of those people are just yakking just to yak and they're not really in the dirt of it. So when I think back to it, I was doing the research. I was reading all the self-help books because there was no like social media marketing books, but there was books about believing in yourself. And I'm a firm believer in all of the self-help stuff. So I was reading that. I was diving into those studies. Um, I found tons of stuff online to help me kind of get through my brain of what I needed to do. 
And then I did a big brain dump. And I tell this to anybody who is an entrepreneur wanting to start a business. I'm like, go get a dry erase board and brain dump. Anything that's up in your brain floating around, get it written down. So for me, it was like, how do I execute this? What do I do? And I just started thinking all the things and writing it down. And then from there, I kind of executed a plan. And the first thing I did is I had a friend who was a real estate broker. And I said, hey, would you be willing to go to lunch with me? And I reached out to her and I said, is there a need for this? Like being a real estate agent, you know a lot of people that are in and out of random businesses. You own a business. Like, is there a need for a social media marketer for businesses? And she said, I'd hire you right now. And for that, that was my moment of like tipping that I was like, okay, I can, this can really happen. Obviously, that was nowhere near my income that I was going to have with the hospital. But I told myself, if I can do this through my maternity leave and get paid and be happy, that was my number one thing. Like I wanted to be content with what I was doing and be able to be home with my baby. I thought, okay, if I can do this and I like it, then I'll go on to other people and reach out to them. Yeah, it's it's so interesting because, you know, we are being in our 30s or in an interesting time period because when we were in college, the beginning of college, Instagram didn't even exist. No. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I remember when we'll Snapchat. We just shoot a picture. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I remember when Instagram came out and Snapchat and all these things. Like, I even remember, uh, you know, texting for the first time and thinking, yeah. like, why would somebody spend time texting? <laughs> Playing when, snake. Yeah, yeah, when you can just call them. And then now how much it's just transformed. It's pivotal, man. It's transformed, so the, yeah, everything. Like my kids are not going to know a time before yeah. that, that. They don't really even know Do cable. Do you know we're TV. older than Google? Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's like one of those essential staples like in – in just the world google yeah. is just like such a global brand yeah so you are in your you're in this like this transition now now are you working for this real estate yeah person? so i i went and talked to her she said yes i'd hire you now this was i was probably like or i was early pregnant i don't know exactly where i was in the timeline and I lined it out how I was going to do it. And looking back now, it's so funny. Like I had the calendar, like a paper calendar, and I would write it out, their plans and all of this in my head. I was trying to get it on paper for their content and the planning of the months and all of it. And then um, I was still working at the hospital. And then I slowly was like, okay, I started working for them. I launched my business. I posted on Facebook and said, hey, this is what I'm doing. 28 weeks pregnant. At that point, I was already doing their marketing. And at that point, I had two other people reach out to me and say, hey, we would love for you to do this for our business. And that was fresh out of the gate. And so I waited. I said, well, let me get this going and then we will sign you. So when you were so when you were doing this, were you working for this lady or were you already your own independent business? So I'm an independent business. So I do contract work for everybody. Um, Like I own my business and then they are my clients and I love it that way because I feel like I'm a part of their team but I'm a part of so many teams so I get to see their dynamic and their dynamic and their dynamic and it's fun to see the flow of all these different companies and that fulfills me in the sense of the people person that I am because working in this field I could sit on my computer all day long I could never leave my desk but for me, it's essential for me to get out and be with people. So I shoot the content. I shoot the video. I go out and I see people. We have monthly meetings. So it's the best of both worlds. So from when you were starting to now, what uh, what has changed from the beginning to where you are now? Oh, man, everything. Um, I have been so blessed with this business. Like this business has been such a blessing to me and watching it grow thinking back to that first little client where she's still my client I still do it's the real estate firm that I do their marketing for and they're still my client they've been for almost four years now and watching the growth for their socials but also watching like looking back at the things I did back then I'm like I had no idea what I was doing but I knew I was going to be good at it and I think transitioning. Now it's a well-oiled machine. Back then I was grinding constantly. I had a newborn. 
I was trying to balance it. If I worked like I did back then, now, there's no way because I have two children now. And one of my babies just turned a year and he's home with me all the time. And my other baby goes to school two days a week. So I'm very, I work out of my home. I am a mom first and foremost, but I'm also an entrepreneur out of my home. And you have to have the structure and you have to have the boundaries and the schedules and everything to make it all work. And I think without having those days, like I have my days to a T. I have my week to a T. I know exactly what I'm doing. And without that, it wouldn't work. So you said it's a well old machine now. Mm-hmm. Can you just kind of give us a rundown on what one of your days looks like? Yeah. So I'm going to kind of give you a rundown of my week. So yeah. what I do is I structure my weeks out where Monday I call it CEO day. And I recommend this for anyone that's an entrepreneur. If you have a CEO day, that's you working for your own business. So you're planning your content. You're sending out your invoices. You're checking out your emails. Is this a certain day of the week? Monday. Sorry. For okay. me, it's Monday. 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 Um, and Monday, it's like I do everything for my business. Obviously, there's times where I have to get in and do stuff for my clients. But now I try to just do everything for myself and my business on that day. And then Tuesdays is my meeting day. Tuesday is my heavy grind. I'm on the grind. I'm working. I'm focused. You cannot get in my way on Tuesdays. Um, Most of the time I go either have meetings on Tuesdays or I find a coffee shop or a restaurant and I sit there all day long and I work. Um, And Wednesdays is kind of a fluff day. That's where I'm just kind of tidying whatever. If I'm having to do more mom stuff on Wednesdays, I do that. If I have to do more business stuff, Wednesday's a free day. Thursdays, I also do meetings. So I'm doing content shoots. I'm doing monthly meetings with clients. Um, I plan my content out a month in advance for all my clients. So like right now we're planning for February and our February calendars are almost complete. So we have already had our meetings. I had a meeting today and they finalize their February content and it's um, middle of January right now. Um, So for me, that's kind of how, and then Friday and Saturday, Sunday, Saturday, Sunday, I try to not work, but I am a workaholic. So that's hard for me. But Friday, I just tie up the loose ends throughout the week. So every day is different. Yeah. So when you said that, okay, you're, you're planning content, you know, you said you got the, uh, you're working on February's mm-hmm. content right now. Does that include just Instagram? Does it include TikTok? Like what are, there's so many platforms yeah. right now. It's so pretty wild, it? all the things. So for me and my business, we only do Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Um, and I will be dabbling into Pinterest in 2024. That's one of my goals. Um, I personally am not a TikToker. Um, I feel like it's not really worth the investment in your business to get be on TikTok. And I know I'm probably going to get a lot of hate for this. But the reason is, is if you get on TikTok and you're scrolling, the majority of TikTok, it's going to be ads and ads for TikTok shop. So unless you're in the realm of retail where you can sell on TikTok shop, the algorithm's not going to boost you. So like for a lot of my clients, that's not their realm. TikTok's not going to be their clientele. They're not going to sell things. They're not going to go viral for their stuff. So TikTok is not something that I invest in and it's not something that I offer. I have had many people come to me and be like, do you do TikTok? And I'm like, we can repurpose your reels on TikTok, but that's all I have to offer. I'm not going to really study the algorithm of TikTok like I do these others. I need to hire me a young college TikToker and let her be my TikTok girl. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it's just, there's something new out every day. And then it's just one of those things that I feel like that I'm becoming more and more like my dad I every know. day. I'm like, I can't just keep up with these young kids and all these TikToks and all those things. So um, what is the reason that you decided to focus on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn? LinkedIn, I can see. Yeah. Uh, but Facebook and Instagram, why, why those? Those two have the heaviest traffic for the clients that I have in their clientele. Um, We see the younger generation heavy in Instagram and we see our parents' generation heavy in Facebook. And I feel like Facebook, like our parents' age, they got on Facebook, they're locked and loaded. They're not going to try to learn new systems and new platforms. So for them, the Facebook, that's what they want. So those ads that go on Facebook, that's what they see. On Instagram, it's more our age and younger. So for them, it's more fun and the reels and kind of incorporating that. Um, I have a team of, I have three employees that are consistent and then I have two, um, like freelance for me. 
And between all of us, I have some that are very heavy in knowing the Instagram and some are very heavy in knowing Facebook. So between all of us, it's a big collaborative effort. So how much would you say uh, that you are posting on each social media platform? So something that whenever we talked earlier and you were saying the ins and outs of like what is up and coming for 2024, posting every day is out. Nobody needs to be posted every day. That is exhausting. It's not going to do anything crazy. I hear experts say, you need to post three times a day. And I'm like, who has time to post three times a day? Yes, it might make you go viral for that one. But the key to social media is consistency and authenticity. And we can get further into those as well, also engagement. But what you want to do is be consistent. So for the majority of my clients, we have a technique where we will rotate. So we'll do either two days a week or three days a week or three days a week and four days a week, bouncing those around. So as long as you're consistent, the algorithm's going to say, okay, they're being consistent. Let's keep pushing it. But if you post personally, I'm horrible at doing my own social media. Like if you look at my Instagram, you're gonna be like, this girl <laughs> does not post enough. And it's because I'm heavy in my client's work. But I'll post once on February 1st and not post again until February 15th. That's not going to get me anywhere. You have to be consistent. And even if that's consistency, meaning every other day or every four days, if you're consistent, that works best. So you said, so when, so when did it change? When did it, when did posting every day, when is that out? I don't even know. (laughs) It does change every day. Like every day I see something that's like, this is the new thing, but I don't really listen to all the riffraff because I'm in the thick of it. I'm in the trenches. I get to see the insights of 10 different accounts. So I get to see like, okay, this worked. This spiked their insights. This right, this post spiked their insights. This post and reel got this many views. And the key of all of those, what is consistent is the consistency of it. So if we backdate it where Like if I had a client sign on and we didn't post for a month because we're in the planning stage of it, that's where you see a drop. But then when you start being the consistent, you can see, okay, every two days, it's pretty on the board. There's not any like big drops in the insights where two people see it. So what's the what's the biggest difference between the algorithm of Instagram and Facebook? Because I'm. I'm I hear the word. It's just a buzzword. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all the time. So. How do you figure out what it wants? Well, that's a great question. Um, Something that is number one of Instagram and Facebook is figuring out your target market. So when you figure out who you are speaking to and who your business is going to be catering to, that is where the magic happens. So like for me, if I'm selling necklaces, I'm not going to be, you're probably not going to be in my algorithm, right? But if I'm just posting about cars and my kids and my phone, that's not helping the algorithm. So what you have to do is figure, be like very streamlined of who you are marketing to. And that helps kind of build your content to get the algorithm to work for you. And I have a list of questions to help you build your personal brand. Um, Personal branding is everything in 2024. You mean go through those questions now? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So what we do, like if a client comes to me and say it's, I have a med spa. So we'll say a med spa comes to me and they're like, hey, we want you to work with us. I'm like, okay, who is your ideal client? And we go through, what do they look like? Where are they shopping? What are they wearing? So we're going to say they're wearing Lululemon. (laughs) They're going to the Starbucks. They are moms. They work. Some work part-time. And we get very granular on that. Because what we do is we want to become in their algorithm all the time, but we also want to cater to what they want to see. And in return, we also want to engage in those businesses that they are going to all the time. So if there's a local coffee shop, say Four Kings Coffee, and all of our clients go to Four Kings Coffee, you better bet the med spa is going to be commenting and tagging and really engaging with Four Kings Coffee because all of our clients go there. So it helps boost the algorithm. Does that make sense? This is like me nerding out. No, no, absolutely. So I I guess my next question would be, how do you figure out like, how do you, so you're 
basically trying to figure out your ideal person you get in their that, brain. Yeah. And then you're yeah. trying to figure out what that person wants to see, yeah. not just from like what you're selling, but the other things that they yeah. like. As no well. one cares what you post. Everybody cares what they want to see. So whenever you figure out your ideal client, you're like, okay, what are they interested in? What do they need to know more of? Um, and some of those questions for here's your questions to help building your personal brand. And I go through these with my clients. When we sign on, we do a big audit of their social medias, and this is part of it. So who is your best customer? So like I said, we get granular on where do they eat? Where do they shop? What do they wear? Um, that's also important with the engagement. But the second question is, how does your product or service benefit your customers? So if you're not speaking on how your business can benefit others, what's the point? You know, there's a billion people on social media and you have your bubble, but if your bubble doesn't know how you can serve them, it's not going to be anything. Um, and then what draws you to your industry? So personally, what draws me to my industry is important because I want to turn to that because that's also what turns people to my business. Does that make sense? And just a few more. Um, what is your mission and vision for your brand? What is your brand's personality? And what lifestyle have you created around your brand? So the what is your brand personality? I have some nonprofits. I have a med spa. I have a real estate group. I have a pediatric day center. None of those have the same personalities. I can't speak the same in captions that I do for one as the other because it's completely different. It's like a person. Each account and business is a person. And it's breathing and it has life and you want to have that life behind it. Um, and then the lifestyle, what I was saying earlier about how I built my brand way before I started my business, that is the importance of it because I had that already where people knew who I was. People knew I was a hard worker. They knew I was authentic. They knew I liked hot coffee in the morning by myself. And because of that, that was part of my brand if I liked it or not. That was part of my billboard. So these businesses, we want to pull from what they're already doing because to their client, they're already forming their brand, even if they haven't launched their brand. So how would you describe your personal brand? Oh, my personal brand. Um, I feel like my personal brand is very fun. If you go to my website, you're going to see a, it's a lot of pink. It's all girls. Um, like I said, I have a team of four women, including myself, five. So there's five of us that are always collaborating. I do work with men, so I don't want to say I pigeonhole myself, but I am a very bubbly, fun. I feel like my business is authenticity is key. Like with me, it's you get, you see what you get. You get what you see. Like I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. There's people that will send me stuff and I'm like, okay, I love you, but that is not the direction we're going. And I feel like I have, because I've branded myself as that, the right clientele has come to me. All of my clients are so near and dear to me. And I feel like it's like a match made in heaven. Like I am dating every one of them and it's a perfect match all across the board. Yeah. So you, you, we keep using the word um, authenticity. Yeah. So um, I did a podcast yesterday and this same kind of worry kept coming up mm -hmm. because um, my buddy, uh, Patrick, who I was interviewing, He's a real estate um, agent and he is a property manager. And we kind of keep encountering the same pain point. One reason that I love podcasting is that it doesn't feel like, you know, if, if we were, if we had video on here, it would almost feel like, okay, someone's watching, you know, you kind of have to act a certain way. Mm -hmm. It's more of a natural conversation yeah. over audio. So what are some tips for being authentic online? So being authentic online is the same as being authentic with this podcast, or if you meet a friend out in the grocery store, like you have to show who you are online, just like you would with anyone else. Because when you show authenticity, it's going to show your personality. It's going to show who you are as a person, as an entrepreneur. It shows people they want to do business with you. But with that, comes great responsibility because I feel like when you blend authenticity and then if you're putting out the right content, you're educating your clients and your network, then it's like the magic potion. So authenticity 
and then you do the good education, then you're the expert and you're the friendly expert that everyone wants to ask. No, you're absolutely, you're absolutely right. And it, it might just be one of those things that I really don't understand yeah. social media as much as, uh, you know, I, I've never been a big poster now that I'm kind of getting back into trying to grow online and things. Uh, I'm, I'm having to do things that I'm not necessarily comfortable, comfortable with, yeah. you, you know, so uh, getting myself out there. Um, you have to just jump in. Yeah. Just both yeah. feet jump in. And, and I don't have a problem with that, but it's like, okay, you know, is this something that the the people that I'm trying to target want to see? Like, yeah. do they, do they want to see, you know, all right, I'm going to go play tennis or, 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 you know, this is behind the scenes. Like, I don't, I don't know yeah. what that looks so like. So I think behind the scenes is huge and showing who you are as a person outside of your business is essential because like for your podcast, I said yes, because I know you as a person. If I didn't know you as a person, I would have been like, okay, what are you going to ask me? What does this look like? What is your podcast about? All these questions that I didn't have to go as deep with because I know you personally and I know your brand because I know you personally. So if I didn't know you personally, the only way I would know your brand was to look you online. And because of that, like you have to show you play tennis, you have two girls, you're a girl dad, like you work hard. All of those things are who you are and make you lovable. And I feel like that is such a hard thing for us to sit back and say, okay, what am I known for? What am I good at? Like when I was in the very heaviness of trying to figure out what I wanted to do in life, I literally made a list of what am I good at? What do people know me for? And for both of it, it was outgoing, being personable, being authentic. Like I'm not scared to look like an idiot. You cannot embarrass me. You cannot make me feel less than because I'm so true and confident in who I am. And I feel like that is something we all just need to stop worrying what everybody's thinking about. Because in the end of the day, no one cares. No one cares what you're doing. No one cares if you're working hard. They're caring about themselves. Absolutely. Um, Me and my me and my brother and my friends have a have a group chat and we were just talking about that it's like you're so if you're so worried about what other people are thinking they're they're really they're not, not even it. worried about you yeah. you know what i mean so it's like oh should i post this or should i not like that's putting a lot of like uh stock in yourself to think that okay <laughs> yes. like a million people online really care if i yeah. post this or not so and you look at all the bloggers and all the influencers that are just viral right now and they're huge because of one thing they are authentic And on social media, where that authenticity needs to show is on your stories. So if you are posting and showing the education and posting and showing your life and showing your brand and showing what you do as a business, that's great. But you need to show the nitty gritty and the funny and your kid flooding the kitchen and your dog eating the basket of food and all that needs to be on your stories because that's where they learn who you are as a person and your feed is where they learn what you do in your business. Absolutely. So this is a question that I've just been wondering because I've been just kind of playing around with the mm-hmm. algorithm. So this, this conversation has given me a lot to think about, yeah. about how I approach uh, posting and social media. So what are some tips for just growing online? So right now I'm going to dive into Instagram cause that's kind of where my focus is at this time. And Number one on Facebook too is video. So longer form video has a huge growth in 2024. That's what everyone's saying. 2024 is the year of longer video. So that's going to be great for vloggers. That's going to be great for the videos where you are just putting a camera in front of you. Like if you get on social media right now and you see the people with just a camera in front of them, like you're talking to a friend, like you in front of your microphone would be perfect. Because that is going viral right now. That's what everybody's loving. Um, Also, the faceless account. So this is kind of opposite. It's in your face or the faceless accounts where you're just picking up your coffee and you're walking. And then you put text on top of what you're doing. That is going great. Um, The other thing that's really big that I think a lot of people aren't utilizing is keywords. You know anything about keywords? Like SEO. So SEO. So Instagram is now, it's an SEO and you want to have all of your keywords in your bio, in your captions, 
in the font when you have the text go across your reels. You want those keywords to be there and that's going to help the algorithm boost. So like for you as an example, for your podcast, who's your ideal client? Um, so my ideal client would be someone that is looking for a career change, unsure about what they want to do. Like that, that's who I'm trying to target for, um, for, for the podcast. Um, but I, I'm also really, th th so that, that's what I, uh, I wanted to ask you, cause I'm also really interested in just like passionate about podcasting in general. Yeah. Just like if you want to, you know, start a podcast, if you, you know, if you're interested in the gear and, you know, I, I told you I went down this rabbit hole of of just figuring it out things. So like I'm passionate about people starting their own shows. Yeah. Like that stuff kind of gives me life. So like for you, up. when you were in the early days and you're Googling, I always call it like rogue Googling. When you're not really caring what you're typing, you're just saying like how to start a podcast, what gear do I buy? What is this brand? What a da da da. That is what you need to focus on because when you Google those things, like if you Googled how to start a podcast right now and you scroll down, it would show you other searches. So other people that searched how to start a podcast would also say whatever brand, is it Tascam? Yeah. They would say, what is Tascam? And those are your keywords. So you want to think about, like I said, who is your ideal client? What are they Googling? And then go from those keywords of also searchable words. So for me, social media marketing, how do you grow on social media? That's going to be, how do I start my own business? How do I do social media marketing? What is marketing? What is social media? look like in 2024 and all of that you want to find the consistency in and those be your keywords that's in your bio in your name feed in your videos in your captions a lot of people don't realize that those keywords you don't want to like make them small and put them in the corner of your picture anymore like that's old news now it's an actual search engine where you want it on the forefront in your face and everywhere absolutely so um I don't know if you've ever worked with anybody that has like a podcast or anything like that, but what would be a way to, cause you know, we talked earlier and you, you listen to podcasts. So what, mm -hmm. what is it like, how do you get people to your show? Like off of, because obviously you're trying to get them off of social media and onto your show. Like mm -hmm. what would be ways for me to be able to grow my show? So people do not really put as much importance as they should on emails. If you get people's email address, you have it all. Because without that, if social media ended tomorrow, what would you do? So a goal for me in 2023 was to grow my email list. And that's going to be my goal from here on out is I want to have people's emails where I send out a monthly newsletter. And that's something I recommend to all my people. Like, let's send out a monthly newsletter. For you, when a new podcast launches, hey, new podcast. Do a little bio with my picture, who I am. That's all it has to be. It doesn't have to be this big thing. But if you say like, okay, this is what I'm going to do with my business. How do I scale it? Number one is getting people's email where you're in their inbox because there's no algorithm with that. You know, like it's straight and forward. Yeah, it's uh, if they open it, you know, they're, they're going to see it. It's yeah. not one of those things that... Because one thing that I, I noticed, because I have multiple accounts on Instagram, so I might post something on my podcasting account, switch over to my other account, and then that post doesn't even show up. I'm yeah, like, I'm having so to go, yeah, I have to I go know. search for it and things like that. So I'm like, okay, the algorithm isn't even recommending my own content to me. So um, do you watch your own stories? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because if you like, I always have those few people that inspire me that I go to their stories all the time. And engagement is something that people sleep on, man. People sleep on engagement. Like you should be hashtag Arkansas podcast or Arkansas or podcast host and click on that and go engage with all of those people. So if you are a real estate agent, search hashtag home for sale. Those are going to be realtors that essentially could work for you if you're a brokerage. You want to engage with those people. You don't want to be like fake and phony. But just like you go up to people and meet them at the park or at a club, it's the same thing. Like, we got to stop making social media this faraway land that's not real and full of real people with real connection. Yeah, it's so interesting, though, because social media kind of did something, and COVID as well, kind of did something crazy to just like social interactions. You know, you know so people on social media, but like, would you say hi to that person at the grocery store? You know, like, 
I don't know if if I you know if they would like if someone knew me from social media like would you say hi to that, that person or like you got two thousand Facebook friends how many of them are you saying hi to in real life so it's kind of made this awkwardness barrier between it like has. real life and then how you are online and that's why the authenticity is so important because if you're showing who you are as a person I mean if you're a hateful person and you're showing all this fluff on social media the truth will come out you know. But if you're authentically a friendly person and then you see this person in the drive through of a restaurant or something and you're like, hey, they're going to be authentic back if that's who they truly are. So you want to put your best face forward on social media. I always say it's a highlight feed. But then be real. If you're having a hard day, be like, hey, today sucked. And people love that. People feed into that. So we talked about earlier in the podcast about you know, posting every day is out. Does that include stories as no, well? No, go rogue on the stories. Go rogue. I always say like, it's so good to do like a morning. If you're going to wake up and have a cup of coffee and just take a picture of your coffee cup with a cool background or your kids or the outside or the pond or whatever and say, good morning, happy Friday Eve or happy Friday. I used to be really good at putting my to-do list on there and that got a lot of traction, but I just get so busy doing the to do list. I don't do it. But if you plan it out, it's not hard. And you can plan it out and you can schedule posts where it just goes automatically. Okay. So, what are some tips for just creating content? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm really good at editing podcasts and things like that, but like reels, foreign yeah. land to me, like fonts, all of that stuff, keeping things in the same aesthetic on, on brand, like mm -hmm. that's just. I, sometimes I feel like my social media is all over the place and my wife always has to reel me back in and say, oh, it's off brand and don't really know. So what are some what are some uh, keys to making content? So for me, I think having those days where like we're not creative every day. Like I have days where I just I, how I do my work is I will plan the calendar a month in advance. I write down all the dates. I go through content pillars. So if we're doing education posts, if we're doing some promotion for an event coming up, if we're doing um, employee shout outs, those I go through and I space them out. And then from there, we fill it in with the captions usually. So I'll go in and build those captions. And I always go back to those keywords. You want to build the captions and then go back and say, okay, what are my keywords? Are they in these captions? If not, rewrite it. But you have to have those days where you're creative and you batch it out. Because once you batch it out, then it's like the juice. You know how it is. If you're creative and you're in the flow, the flow's going. But if you're having a day where you start to write a sentence and nothing's there, don't waste your time and energy. Yeah. So you mentioned something that was really interesting earlier uh, that you were going to be focused on in 2024. And that was Pinterest. Pinterest. Can you elaborate, elaborate yeah, on that? Yeah. So Pinterest is the biggest search engine next to Google. What? I don't know if that is. Uh, okay, I, was <laughs> I shouldn't about to say, say that so <laughs> firmly, but in my realm of clients and all of their searchability, I mean, I was talking to some college students. I have some interns and they were like, look it up on Pinterest. They didn't say Google it. They said, look it up on Pinterest. So like for you, when you do your podcast, you should just throw up some graphics on Pinterest, but you have to have a landing site that feeds it back to you. So like if you have a blog or if you have a website, attach your Pinterest post to that blog or that newsletter or that website or something where the goal is to get the email address. End of the day, that's what you want to do is get their email address. So if they see your stuff on Pinterest and they're like, hey, that's a cool vibe, go to your website. Oh, that's a cool vibe. Pop-up comes up. Hey, you want to learn more? You want a freebie? Freebies are so easy to get a good email address. So a freebie pops up. They put their email address, you're in. And then from there, you send them the stuff and y'all rock and roll and you follow them on Instagram and you build that relationship of being authentic and having that communication and engagement. The authentic engagement is so important. Then you have a friend online pretty much, you know. So what are you up to in 2024? Like, what are some things that you have planned out? You, I mean, you've already got your February planned out. So what, what are some things that you are... Uh, your goals for 2024? Oh, 2024. Um, something that I'm going to try to do in 2024 is slow down. Um, since I started my business, I have been, 
I have a natural hustle mentality where it's just like I am from the second I wake up until the second I go to bed, I'm in business mode. I have to force myself. I have alarms on my phone that's like, it's time to put your phone away. It's time to go have family time because without it, that's just who I am. I have to work. I love it. And I'm a grinder, but I'm going to back off the hustle culture and I'm going to slow down and just take my time and work how I work like the well-oiled machine, but not try to pull in all this. Like I'm always like, that'd be a great idea. That'd be a great idea. That'd be a great idea. Um, My website is officially launching in 2024. That's super exciting because we're also going to be launching courses where people can go on and purchase a course and it's all online where it's If you're trying to develop your brand or social media blueprint 101, um, I actually have one that's called happy hour. That's just if someone wants to come to me and they're like, okay, I want to start a business, but I have no idea what I'm doing. We consult businesses that are trying to figure out to realm it in where it's like, okay, you want to do this, 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 let's bring it together. So that happy hour is if you have pain points online, if you have pain points in your business, we'll solve them. That's awesome. That's incredible. That, Thank you. Um, I'm excited about 2024. Yeah, I mean, see, I mean, it's it's cool that I got to talk to you because a lot of the research I did for this show, I, I went online and I was searching, um, you know, social media marketing, that sort of thing. And I mean, you you've answered so many of my questions uh, for for my own branding and you know things that I need to work on uh, as well. So where online can people find you? So I am on Instagram. I am at Chelsea B. Greer. Um, And something that with your social media, what you want to do is that name that people like I give people, you want that different than your name that's right below your right above your bio, because both of them are searchable and people don't realize that. So if I had Chelsea B. Greer as my name and Chelsea as my name below it, where my bio is. That's a waste of a searchable area. So what do you what would you put there? Because so I for see, me, I, see I have that. social media marketer and consultor. So that's my name on Instagram. When you go to my Instagram above my bio, it says that. So for you, it podcast master. I mean, that's something fun and easy. Yeah, yeah. And then you would have your Tevin whatever up top, where it's your actual name you give to people. And I went back and forth if I should have my name, my like at Spike Social. I have that just in my pocket if I ever want to use it. But for me, my brand, I am my brand. My brand is me. And I get my clients because of who I am as a person. And I feel like that was my forefront. Instead of doing Spike Social as the heavy, I wanted my name to be the heavy. And then what I do is my bio. So I see online, people kind of do a mix. They'll be like, okay, let's say Chelsea, and then it'll have like a little dash, and then Mm -hmm. it'll have like, so... Is that a good strategy or should you just put like podcast master? I just do podcast master. Okay. I mean, if your name is up top, people are going to find you. Like if they know your first and last name, if people know I'm Chelsea Greer, they're going to find me, you know? Um, But if they also just say someone in California says social media marketer, they could find me too. I actually hired both of my employees. Well, I have a few more, but two of them I hired from social media from searching virtual assistant. Really? Yeah, I just searched virtual assistant and found some people and interviewed people and vibed with them. And one girl was in Scotland. Like I have a Scotland employee, a Florida employee, and a Washington employee. I have some local people too. <laughs> it's yeah. far away like yeah. that. It's crazy. No, that's that, that's awesome. And I can't believe I forgot to ask that. But yeah, that's something, that's a trend I've been seeing is that their name is actually something else. Yeah, so, change it up because it's both, it's it's a wasted real estate if you're not putting what you're doing there. Yeah, so how long how long has that been, how long has Instagram been like SEO targeted versus? That's a newer thing. Like the keywords, that's something that's probably the end of last year got heavy. Um, and I feel like the searchableness, the keywords go hand in hand. And when your Facebook and Instagram start glitching and really making you want to roll over your phone with a car because you made a reel and then it deletes, that's how you know an update's coming. Mm. So that's how you know things are shifting and you need to kind of pay attention to those new things that are developing and dive into those. And I guess the last question before I uh, let you go is, what are some ways to build your email list? 
So like I said earlier, the freebie is probably the best thing. So if you go in to like Canva is an easy thing to learn. Anybody can learn Canva. You can go in and build a freebie where it's just a graphic saying like how to build a podcast 101. Buy this, purchase this from here, ask these questions. Like obviously, I don't want to say anybody can do a podcast just like no one. I don't want to say anybody could do your marketing because it's not the business. It's how you run your business. But if you just get very granular in a freebie, like don't gatekeep stuff. Send out a freebie. People will give you their emails. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to to sit down with me and, and just drop all of these gems. Like I just look at social media so much differently now. And I have a lot of respect for what you do. And, you know, just that ability to just jump in and chase your dreams is something that Thank you. I really admire. So um, can you say your socials? your socials again. Yeah, it's at Chelsea B. Greer. And then Facebook is just Spike Social Media Marketing. Is there anything else you want to say to the listeners before we jump off here? No, just whatever you want to do in life, don't be fearful. Like if you want to start a business, start a business. If it doesn't work, you tried because we only get to live once and it's too short to not be happy every single day. Chelsea, I appreciate you being on the show. Thank you so much, Tevin. This has been another episode of the Clever Angle podcast. You can follow us on all socials at the Clever Angle. And until next time, peace. Thank you to everyone that has taken the time to listen to this episode. If you are interested in doing the 30 day vlog challenge, the freebie that I've created just because I was inspired from doing this episode, the link to that will be in the show notes until next time. Peace.